In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the oil filter adapter on this Ram 1500. This happens to be on the 3.6 liter V6 engine. Let's get into it. We're going to disconnect the negative side, use a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen up this nut right here, and grab the terminal. Slide it up and out of the way. Using a eight millimeter socket, we're gonna loosen up this worm clamp. Take the snorkel off the air box, slide that off. Disconnect this connector right here, just push down on the tab, it slides off. Using a eight millimeter socket, loosen up this worm clamp. Disconnect this hose right here. Just want to push down on the tab and slide it out. You can see right underneath when you push that, the two ears separate. That will slide off. Just grab the snorkel, just slide up over there. There's a grommet and there's another one in the back here. Just pull up and we'll pull forward. It slides right off. Now I'll just pull this rubber coupler off. Put that on the intake. Just take this connector, use a pick or a screwdriver, just slide the little lock back, push up, disconnect it. See there's a wire retainer right here. I'm gonna pop that down. You can use a trim tool. Just pop that down. Connected. And there's another, there's another retainer right here. Just pop that off the bracket. And one more right there. So just pop those off just to get some more room. Disconnect this hose right here. I'm just gonna use the trim tool just to pry it back. Just right there. Disconnect the throttle body. I'm just gonna use the trim tool or a pick. Just slide this little connector back, lock, and then push down. Disconnect that, then the retainer right there. Just use the trim tool, pop that off. Using a 10 millimeter socket, take these two nuts off. These two hoses, I'm just gonna use a pick, get under the hose, just loosen it up. Twist those off, same on this one. Just get under it, loosen it up, and pull that off, and pull it out of the brackets right there. And the solenoid, just lift that up out of the way. Just slide those hoses back a little bit. Should be fine. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench, take these two nuts off in the back here. They're loose, I'm just gonna do it by hand. Just be careful, don't drop the nuts. There's a bracket right here with two bolts in it. You wanna take those out, use a 10 millimeter socket. There's a retainer in the back there. We're just gonna pop that off. Just using a trim tool, just get underneath. I'll just pop this off. Now I'll take these bolts out on the top and on the bottom of the intake, use an eight millimeter socket.
all of those. Just make sure those are all loose. They are caged, so they're just going to stay with the intake and slide up. And we're going to pull the intake towards the passenger side. And just slide it out. Just grab this foam piece and just pull it up and out of the way. Just using a trim tool, just get under these retainers. Just pop these up for the wiring harness. That's good. We can start disconnecting the connectors. Just to make it easier, I'm going to disconnect the coil connectors. Just pop those out. And these have little locks on them. You're going to slide the locks up for the injector. You get a pick, slide that lock up just like that. You push down. And push down in the connector. There's a little tab there, and then you can slide that up. You do the same on the other ones. Slide that harness out of the way. Now disconnect this larger connector. There's a little button right here. Push down on that. That just slides apart. Set those aside. You can access these injectors on this side. Just using a trim tool, pop these retainers up from the valve cover. Careful, don't stretch the wires. Do the same right here. Just to get some slack on the wires. There we go. There's one more back there. Disconnect these connectors, pop up the locks, there we go, and push down, disconnect the connectors, slide the harnesses out of the way. Take these four bolts out, use a T30 socket. Just be careful, don't drop anything in the intake. Grab the fuel rails, and just wiggle them a little bit, just pull them up. Just be careful. Oops. Sometimes they pop off like that. You get a little bit of fuel. It's okay. There you go. Make sure you don't lose the O-rings. You should replace these either way. over. There's a couple O-rings in there. I'm going to take those out. Just 
choose a pick. And just set this aside. Just grab a couple that just fell down. So we have all the O-rings. You can grab the injectors and try pulling those out. If you need to, you can use some pliers. These are just hose pliers. Just rock them back and forth as you pull them up. Oops. Slide right out. You can do the same for the other ones. You can put a little bit of O-ring lubrication on the O-rings and in the fuel rail, just slide it in, line it up like that. That's good, and we'll do the same for the other ones. And then slide that one in. Those are all in now. Using a eight millimeter socket, we're gonna take these bolts, and loosen these up. Those are caged, so those are going to stay with the intake, but just loosen them. are all loose. There's a wire retainer in the back. You can use a trim tool. Just pop that off. Just try to get underneath that. There we go. Pop that up out of the way. There's another wire clipped in. Back, just slide that up. Now grab the intake, lift it up, and slide it out. Be careful, there may be some debris in there. I'm gonna try to not have it fall in the holes. I'm gonna disconnect the connector back here. I'm just using a pick. Slide that back, and there's a little button. You just wanna push on that button. If you need to, you can use the pick to push the button down. Slide that connector out of the way. Now we'll disconnect the other connector. I'm just gonna use a longer, longer pick just so I can push the button down. There we go. Slide that off. There's a button on the other side. Just push down on that button, slide it off. There's a coolant hose right here. If you can get on there, disconnect that right now, but we're gonna disconnect that once the cooler or the adapter is up. I'm gonna use an E8 socket. Take these two bolts back out on the rear. And then there's three more in the front. So a total of five bolts. So loosen those up.
right, that's loose. Now I'm moving to the front. And one more. All right, that's it. They're all loose. I'm just going to use some needle nose pliers to move that hose clamp. If you have some pl hose clamp pliers that'll fit in there, you want to use those. Just do the best you can. I just want to slide this hose off. There we go. Slides off pretty easy. Get a little bit of coolant in there. It's okay. Slide that out of the way. the housing out. Take a rag and some brake parts cleaner. You want to just clean up where the where the adapter is gonna mount up. Right there. And you if you had any oil in the valley you want to clean that up. Try to use some rags and try to soak it up as best as possible. Good, looks clean. On the O-rings, you wanna make sure you put a little O-ring lubricant or some silicone. You can put some on the other seals as well. Just slide this in place. I'm gonna get that hose on first. Slide that on. best you can. Might have to make adjustments. All right, that's lined up. You can plug those connectors in before we put the bolts in. Lock that down and lock this one down. Push it down on the lock. That's good. Put the bolts in. And get those started. Snug these down first. Now torque this to 106 inch pounds. Let's go around again, double check. It's good. Now you're gonna take the seals off the intake, just use a pick. 
peel those out. Just like that. Flip it over, you can take these out as well. Using a little brake parts cleaner. Just clean these out. You can take a rag and just wipe them clean. Make sure there's no oil in there. Then do the same on these ones as well. Just wash it out and dry it with the rag. Do the same with the rest of them. Take the new seals, slide those in position. Just push them in. They should stay as long as everything's clean. Flip it over. Do the same on the other side. And that's good. Now you can install it on the vehicle. Now we're just going to take a rag and some brake parts cleaner. Just clean up this area where the gasket's going to sit on the engine. Just try not to get any sand down in the holes and the intakes. And if, if it's pretty thick, you can use a scraper get some of it off, but clean it up good. Just do the same for the rest. All right, that looks good. Now I'm just gonna use some compressed air just to blow out the ports in case anything fell down in there. Take the manifold, lower intake manifold, slide it in place and get the screws started. Started. We'll start snugging those down. And then there is a torque sequence for this. Now we have a torque sequence. We're gonna to torque these to 106 inch pounds. And this is number one. Number two is way in the back. Number three is on the opposite side in the middle. Number four in the back. Number five is over here. Number six. Number seven. And number eight. That's it. Uh, take the injector rail, slide it in place. You can put some silicone on the O-rings of the injectors. Slide those in place, that's good. Put the bolts in, get those started.
torque those to 62 inch pounds. wires, get these set up, I want to connect the connectors for the fuel injectors, lock those down and push the retainers in, the wire retainers. This will just hang out there. Now the other side. Connect these wiring harnesses. You need to push retainers to hold the harness down. You want to push those in. Coils, coil wires in. All right, that looks good. Now take this insulation, slide that in place. Just take the upper plenum and just wipe this off just with a rag. You can use a little brake parts cleaner if it's real dirty. This one's not too bad. All right, that's good. Flip it over, all the bolts are still in it, so that's good. Slide this in place. And you wanna get the studs in on the brackets. This is this bracket here and the bracket in the back. And get all the bolts started. Torque these to 89 inch pounds. We're going to start in the back. That's number one. This is number two. Number three. Number four is further back. This is number four. Number five. Number six. And number seven. Now we're gonna put the nuts on this bracket right here. If it seems like this bracket is pushed out, you may have to loosen the bolts down below. This one looks fine. Two nuts on. There and there. 
Tighten those down. And the two nuts for the bracket in the back. Get those on. And snug those down. Snug. Now connect the hose over here and the wiring harness. I'm going to push the push pins through. Just where those go. Connect the connector over here. Lock that down. And the connector underneath the throttle body. Push that in place, lock that down. And push that retainer. Any other hold downs, push those in. That looks good. I'll take this bracket with the connector, get those two bolts started. And push the retainer in place. That's good. Snug those down. Now take this hose, line this up. It's going to go in the intake right there. Slide that in the brackets. And the other hose with the valve. Make sure that's plugged in. Slide that in place. That'll go over that hose. And plug this in right here. Now take the snorkel, and this, this piece came off before, so I'm just gonna slide this over. Slide it. Slide it over the throttle body. And get the grommets lined up up top. And push it down. Lined up good. There we go. Tighten down the worm clamp. And snug that up. Take this connector, lock that down. Take the hose in the back, lock that down. Slide the snorkel over the air box, and we'll tighten this one down. Snug that down. Connect the negative terminal, slide that in place, make sure it's all the way down. Tighten it up with the wrench. Make sure it's snug, just give it a wiggle, and that's tight. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do.
TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.